Today's video is a special one that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I've talked about this individual a fair bit, having discussed him on stream numerous times and of course my haphazardly thrown together video from years ago. But I feel like I just didn't do the guy justice. Out of everybody I've covered, I think this guy is easily the most tragic. Today, we'll be going over one of the most brilliant men to have ever walked the earth. A man handpicked by God himself to build the third temple by unusual means. Everything this man has built was his own work, by himself with no outside influences or resources other than the warmth of Yahweh's glow. This is the story of Terry A. Davis, his legendary operating system dubbed the name Temple OS, and his divine quest to bring the third temple to the masses through computer software. This is, without a doubt, the holiest of quests. Terry's tale begins on December 15, 1969 in West Allis, Wisconsin. He was the second youngest of eight children. Saying that he had a crowded childhood is likely an understatement. As a child, Terry showed an astounding interest in technology, even being accepted into a gifted student's program and access to an Apple II computer, which of course was hot stuff at the time. Little did Davis know that he was setting down the framework for what would be the path he'd be on for the rest of his life. During the 80s, Terry mastered several facets of computer programming, he learned the archaic language of assembly all by himself. He mastered writing software for the Commodore 64 and allegedly built a line drawing algorithm that put the stock algorithm to shame. This should go without saying, but this was incredible stuff for someone to be able to do back then. But it's even more impressive that he was able to do it completely self-taught. He clearly showed signs of high intelligence, and his SAT score as of 1989 is said to have been within the 1440 to 1460 range, which would put him in the 97th to 98th percentile. Truly impressive stuff. Davis got a job at Ticketmaster in 1990, working there for about four years until he would transfer to their research department, developing technology for barcode readers and power supplies. This job would hold him over until 1996, when he would leave the company in hopes of working on satellite systems. Despite this being such a large goal, Terry reached out to many defense contractors through his father, but unfortunately nothing would ever come from this. Trust me, with the prowess that we'll be seeing soon, it's a damn shame this guy didn't get to live out his dream. However, this year would also be the beginning of Terry's regular manic episodes, wherein he'd suffer delusions of grandeur and cited interactions with space aliens. His most notable episode from this period was when he was driving aimlessly for hundreds of miles, believing he was being guided by a voice on his car's radio. He'd eventually be found by a police officer as he was shuffling across the road. The officer offered to take him into town, which Terry agreed. However, his plans would change very quickly, as shortly after he decided to jump out of the moving car and attempt to flee, breaking his collarbone on impact. Understandably, he was rushed to the hospital. X-rays were taken of Davis's body, showing bone fragments from the injuries he sustained from his attempted escape. Terry caught wind of this, believing that he had artifacts implanted into his body by extraterrestrials, which caused him to make another run for it. Terry got up, bolted out of the hospital, and made a valiant effort to steal an idling truck from a nearby parking lot. Unsurprisingly, this all led to Terry spending a little bit of time in jail. But this minor setback wasn't going to stop Terry, because he managed to break the arms of his glasses and stuck them into an electrical outlet, quickly discovering that they were made of non-conductive material. It's widely speculated that this was either an attempt to injure himself enough to warrant his cell being opened, or some kind of elaborate scheme to overload a circuit and create some sort of disruption. This attempt only led to him having to take another vacation, this time at a mental hospital. Terry would spend a few weeks in a mental institution before he was released back into the wild. During his stay, he believed that the food he was being served was laced with poison or nefarious drugs, which understandably angered him. He did what any man in his position would do. He tossed a chair through a nearby window in protest. This stay was not a pleasant experience, and those weeks likely seemed like years. But all of his pain that he had endured leading up to this point had led him to want to take after Christ. Upon his release, he donated his personal possessions to charity services and gave certain items to his nieces and nephews. This was all very sweet, but this need to detach is likely a symptom of mania. We'll see more signs of this later on. According to Biography of Terry Davis, The Greatest Programmer to Ever Live by Hash Brown, Terry cited that he had feelings of being an atheist technocrat of sorts, as it was wrong and immature, which led him to wanting to live a simpler life, one with Mr. God. Terry would then cite the Amish as a prime example of his idealized, secularized, simplistic life. By 1997, Terry was living off of the high of overcharged credit cards and predatory loans. 
His current passion was developing CNC machines and designing a milling machine that was similar to a 3D printer, only it would cut materials to build items rather than print them. His work would snowball into the forming of Davis's first business, the Home Automation and Robotic Equipment Company, or HAIR for short. However, despite being an innovative and lucrative market, Terry decided that his inventions were nowhere near primetime use in a consumer market. Shortly after the turn of the century, Terry would begin rebuilding and fine-tuning a physics simulation program that he had previously developed back in 1994, named SysSim. The simulator was capable of generating answers to equations that were punched into it. This project was, by all means, what brought Terry back into the computer science world after shutting down his company. From 2001 to 2002, Terry utilized his spiked interest in computers by developing microchips for a printer manufacturing company. These chips were designed to moderate the level of ink and cartridges, which would allow them to be refilled efficiently. This contract, of course, was short-lived, but Terry was still motivated to do something with his technical prowess, and set forth to resurrect hair by developing an entirely new project, a little program for a big dream that would change his life in ways that he couldn't even begin to imagine. This was when the idea for Lose Those, Terry's personal operating system, was born. Unfortunately, not much is known from 2002 to 2008, so there is currently no way of knowing exactly what Terry's work or living situation was. The common consensus was that he was working full-time on his OS project. In October of 2008, Terry took the time to create a subreddit dubbed Loosethos under an account by the same name. This subreddit would be a hub for everything related to the operating system's development. A website by the same name also came online, detailing many of Terry's interests and opinions. He would also post his operating system to programming subreddits, but he would be ignored by most people, or they'd get annoyed with his incoherent religious and IT ramblings. For the next few years, Terry promoted Loosethos on social media sites like Twitter, OS Dev, and Hacker News, during this period, Terry would get routinely silenced by the evil moderators of these sites due to his colorful language and spammy posts. By 2012, Terry had either renamed Loosethos or made a distribution of it named Sparrow OS and attempted to use the same marketing tactics that he did before. The success was minuscule to say the least. Terry uploaded a video on a now lost channel. The video named Songs by God and Me number 13 has not resurfaced in years. This stuff will most likely remain lost to time. However, this initial video did convince Terry to upload more videos detailing the features of his hot new homebrew OS. This also provided his viewer base with direct interaction. This small notoriety would catch the attention of a user on Something Awful, going by the name of Jimford. He provided some not-so-nice commentary on the operating system, breaking down the complicated installation and even attempting to write his own software. This also led to more people learning about Terry's dwindling mental health, Anyway, moving forward, by 2013, Terry had decided on the third and final name for his programming project, Temple OS. Soon after the name change, Temple OS would be released to the greater internet. A Twitter account and website, named after the OS, would pop up shortly thereafter. Terry went on to write intricate design documents, user information, and full-on video games specifically for his pet operating system. One of the games he created was entitled After Egypt, but this game wasn't just some piss-in-the-wind baby program. No. Terry saw this as one of the most important features of his project. It essentially was an oracle where he believed that you could interface in dialogue with God. Okay, we're going to go uh, try the Moses game after Egypt. There's camp, if we break camp. The number of people gets randomly bigger or smaller. Anyway, uh, oh, watch this. They'll do go golden calf. They, uh, they all run in a circle and... Uh, that's from the Bible story. Few clouds, uh, God was a cloud. <laughs> I was gonna have it lead them around or something or make figures in the clouds. Anyway, uh, let's see, hold court. A woman commits adultery to a child. Ooh. Punish. Hold court. A child commits adultery to a child. Really punish. Hold court. A child commits idolatry. Really punish. Okay, so a uh, few map. They wandered 40 years in the desert. So this must be what they did. <laughs> uh, make water. He struck a stone and it made water. Hands in the air. They uh, did well and they did good in battle. When his hands got tired, they started losing. Moses. They got sick of the manna, and uh, they uh, they wanted meat, and God gave them uh, meat, and they got sick <laughs> and died. <laughs> so uh, here's the cool thing. 
Um, so uh, this really works. Uh, if, if you talk to God, he'll talk to you. So uh, let's ask him, uh, I guess they got seagulls uh, from, uh, let's see, what can we, if you do an offering, he'll talk. Uh, how about, uh, uh, did you make any babies today? <laughs> Okay, 20% of the net profits you derive calculated. This is from uh, the Bible, uh, small print. <laughs> his vision for his operating system changed from just being a playground for software development and evolved into a religious fulfillment service. The After Egypt game, much like many other components in Temple OS, was heavily reliant on random number generation. Certain parameters would be filled in by the user and the code within the OS would process it, returning an item or an asset that was created spontaneously, as if it were made by God himself. By September of 2013, he added a new section to his Temple OS website entitled Terry Davis's Rants, and it housed some pretty interesting tidbits of information. He made no bold claims, declaring that he was God's chosen programmer and that he was undoubtedly the greatest programmer on the planet. I mean, he's not wrong, he clearly is. However, this is unfortunately another sign of his recurring mania. I am God's chosen programmer. He has endowed me with divine intellect, like the authors of the Bible. It has no code I did not write. It never runs code I did not write. I am the best programmer on the planet. I wrote a 64-bit compiler, assembler, kernel, debugger, bootloader, graphics library, graphics editor, editor, tools like grep, and a bunch of demos, including a first-person shooter and flight simulator. I am the best programmer on the planet. That's why God chose me and that should help you understand. There are two types of programmers, those who have written compilers and those who haven't. What sounds impossible for you is not impossible for me. In October of 2013, Terry created a YouTube channel for the project. This would further the reach of his message and also attract some less than favorable attention, but I'm sure you can understand why. His videos were undeniably strange and unusual. Many of his videos featured odd-sounding musical arrangements. Turns out, he developed a digital audio workstation called Psalmody that allowed him to create music via random number generation and direct manipulation. Pretty neat stuff. So I come in here and uh, do a random melody and I hit escape. It's just, a, it's just good luck. To do a comic first so um now i you you do this like text so you do shift and then cursor keys control control c control v and then you i do this is a i have a formula or a pattern i always do control c control v now, now you do control left arrow to get to the beginning and then x or you can do this and then this with the mouse I like to use a keyboard. By the ascent of 2013, Terry published a list of demands on his website, where he claimed that Temple OS was God's third temple and is absolutely an oracle. He demanded that Linux developers, Microsoft engineers, and the suits at Intel listen to what he had to say and support Temple OS through their own operating systems. He demanded that Temple OS be installed by default on all future tech devices. I've always found this part especially interesting. I feel like he was trying to convince Intel, a company that creates and sells computer hardware, that the operating system should be physically installed in some sort of chip, as if it's some kind of default boot or a failsafe when an OS bootloader fails or something like that. Or if you just wanted to talk to God too, I suppose. Terry's activity on Twitter would reach a wider audience, giving us further insight into the deteriorating mind of a genius. Unfortunately, most of these tweets were just unintentionally hilarious ramblings about the CIA, their abilities regarding glowing in the dark, and their involvement with a specific group of people. The CIA has a seven-year-old deep-throating a loaded 45 at DMV next to me fucking with me. I'll teach him to pull the trigger. In a series of video uploads, Terry demonstrated the belief that he had gained the direct attention of one of Google's co-founders, Larry Page. He created 106 personalized videos that were intended for Larry, demonstrating a variety of different parts of his operating system. These videos were all uploaded from July to August of 2014, so Davis was definitely very busy. These videos include information on the programming language used, a modified version of C referred to as Holy C artwork that was generated via the previously mentioned random number generation algorithm, and plenty more. The most important takeaway from these videos, however, is Terry's claims that he is being targeted by the CIA. 
Apparently, the agency was attempting to sabotage Terry's hard work for religious and political reasons. These videos also featured Terry's birds, who would often erupt into a cacophony of chirps. However, this didn't bother Terry, as he would normally just wait until he finished to continue speaking. These videos would also feature more of Terry's delusions, with him making comments that he is the successor of Solomon, and that anybody who criticized him was a politically incorrect racial epithet. Longer videos would gradually start to come out, eventually leading Terry to unveiling one of his greatest creations, a portrait of God's favorite animal, an elephant with blue eyes. I like elephants, and God likes elephants. Here's a, uh, a realistic elephant. It's done with interpolation with vectors. It, sometimes it works. It's kind of uh, limited. These videos were not doing him any favors, though. As his viewer base grew, so did his ego. I'm not saying he's bad for that, but his delusions of grandeur were only increasing in scope due to this. All of this notoriety would inevitably lead to some interested parties. A staff writer for Vice's tech blog Motherboard, Jesse Hicks, caught wind of Terry's story and reached out in hopes of correspondence. The two would communicate for some time before the article would debut with the title of God's Lonely Programmer. This article featured Terry's recollections about his manic episodes, where from 1996 to 2003, he experienced episodes and would end up in a mental hospital, and that for those years he was genuinely pretty crazy, but he preferred to think that he was crazy in a different way. After the release of the article, Terry's fame soared with his fans spreading his claims of high priesthood. Users from 4chan's Gboard, the technology section of the site, would often have several active threads about Terry and would actively participate in watching his videos and streams as a blossoming community. But, uh, again, the newfound attention would only spread the reach of his mental illness, as soon as tweets became far more colorful than they were before. He allegedly admitted to killing a CIA operative with his car, with many later claims of further violence. CIA is blocking God. Step 1, kill CIA. Step 2, profit. The CIA is extortionist. They read Facebook, find secrets, and terrorize cowards around the world. That's our CIA. Yeah, I killed a CIA nigger with my car in 1999. Score 1 for the good guys. God said I get to trample the CIA shortly. His mental state would continue to spiral out of control when in the fall of 2015, Terry posted an article on his website titled, Why the CIA Must Surrender to the IRA, where he ranted about Obama and some other pressing topics. Obama and the atheist CIA wake each day and ask, how can we fuck God today? I know, we'll make nuns perform abortions. We make homos dance naked in Russian churches in front of old church ladies. Isn't that hilarious? We'll make a complete mockery of marriage because, after all, n****ers don't have fathers, and that's not fair. My wife, Michelle, wants no cupcakes for school birthdays because of single moms. We'll make God hated, just for pedophiles and crazy insane sand n****ers. We'll drink fetus soup with the queen and celebrate the end of births. Maving children is pedophilic. We'll make every five-year-old African girl learn how to put on a condom. We'll make churches no longer tax-exempt. <laughs> we'll make all of the conservative sons into liberal atheist homos. <laughs> we'll bring in Mexicans to ensure democratic votes. The USA will be a slum like Mexico, but I don't care. On second thought, I love white people. Come back. How come white people don't have kids? Oh yeah, we made the white people greedy, coveting the wealth of the rich. The IRA is like the NRA, but for computers. The CIA wants all code in the cloud under their lock and key. They want to ban compilers and make people think HTML is computer programming. They want to evaporate desktops so you have no local computer, just massive cloud computers. Well, that certainly didn't make a lot of sense, but hey, I'm sure in its own way it's very profound. The most important update to his website arrived on February 2016. The site received its now iconic turquoise coat of paint that would render the site barely legible. Nothing else really changed about the site, but I figured you guys would want all the juiciest bits. One month would pass before we'd get the next entry in Terry's ongoing online escapades. Terry decided that the next step in his holy mission required him to dip his toes into the ever-growing market of livestream entertainment. However, these streams were centered more on education and spirituality rather than entertaining the masses. But this always had the exact opposite effect. Most of his screen time was divided between a few things, namely demonstrating the complexity of his operating system, making offerings to God via the form of RNG images and music, reading up on the latest stories regarding tech and visiting the blog of Physics Girl, an online content creator who Terry had a bit of a thing for. He liked her a lot. During this stream, Terry devoted an extensive amount of time to responding to his trolls and critics by calling them CIA n***ers along with some other colorful names. 
He'd ramble for long periods of time with his long-witted tangents about his conspiracy theories. These streams unsurprisingly attracted the attention of Kiwi Farms, but this party was only just beginning. He saw an influx of new viewers and took advantage of his rising fame by streaming almost daily. Viewers became privy to his life updates, OS developments, and of course his opinions on the CIA. These streams would often go on for hours at a time, at one point reaching up to a 12-hour runtime. The only thing keeping him running was caffeine. Terry loved him some motherfucking Diet Shasta. Eventually, as his streaming career blossomed and gained even more attention, Terry put his efforts into reaching out to Physics Girl. His reasoning was that he needed help with the physics engine that he utilized in one of his games. This period marks the beginning of the darkest point in Terry's story. He had recently begun speaking on consciousness. He'd break down his feelings of despair and isolation, showcasing his moments of dissociation. During a live stream, one of Terry's many viewers asked him why he always talks to himself. Terry stated that he didn't know he was doing it, later elaborating that he thinks it's some kind of mental program, a personal hell. Terry's video content would shift from discussing his operating system to just vlogs about his daily life. A sizable majority of the videos that he would put out featured what he would call paladin walks, where he would travel around his town and speak about what was on his mind. He initially claimed that these videos were actually for Physics Girl, who he claimed that he was now married to. Very sweet stuff. These vlogs also opened the opportunity for viewers to check out Terry's Spartan Room. Any videos that featured his room were usually made for Physics Girl. Before we move forward, there's a video I need to show you because of how uncomfortable it is. I'm not going to give you any context, I just need you to see this. This is where this man was going. So fucking, uh... No, I wasn't sexually assaulted. I think... Uh... Hey, how you doing? I'm sitting here talking about sexual assault. You walk up here and fucking get in my face. I didn't get in your face. I'm oh, okay, okay, sorry. Okay, the, uh, over there. I didn't even want nothing okay. to do with you. Okay, I'm I talking in a private conversation. You. you come walking over here. This is a this is a public street. I'm okay. walking to the fucking store. Okay. The place I see you walk damn near every fucking day. I never okay. say nothing to you in my life. You know, okay. You want to just disrespect? Me? That certainly could have gone a lot better. I think the picture's painted pretty clearly now, huh? Shortly after this video, Terry's YouTube channel was suspended for violating the terms of service. This most likely was because of his particular word choice when talking to certain people. He most definitely had an eloquent way with words. The channel suspension meant that Terry would need a new platform for his content, and rather than rely on big tech to fill this need, he did the biblical thing and used his Jesus OS website for his content. His videos were only getting progressively nuttier, where we can actually see that Terry's mental state was dwindling faster than it was before. He had abruptly stopped taking his medication, wherein he'd show signs of heavy aggression. By July to August of 2017, he began recording videos that featured his parents. These did not go well. Um, and, uh, shut up. Okay, so, um, this vile woman arose out of the swamp. Shut up a second. Hold on. About your parents. I have balls. This woman insulted me. This woman insulted me. Called me no balls. That told me that fucking dog had no balls. That ball, that dog is getting raped. That dog is getting raped. That fucking dog is getting raped. Fuck you. The dog is getting raped. By who? By the fucking other dogs. Yes. You are the fucking righteous monster of fucking Area 51. You are the fucking monster of Area 51. You do not get raped by the fucking pigs. His mental decline would be firing on all cylinders as the half-life of his medication had definitely worn off and his ability to process reality, or at least how we perceive it, was escaping him. Rational thoughts became less common in his content. Instead, he'd ramble about the glow in the darks and terrible things happening to dogs. When he finally introduced his parents to his following, he was often insensitive in conversation. He acted as if he was possessed by someone else, not recognizing his parents and coming at them with aggressive talk. Somehow, some way, the tensions rose too high and Terry was arrested on August 27, 2017 for a domestic battery charge. Terry had assaulted his father over an argument. The founder of 8chan, Jim Watkins, used his platform to raise money and pay for Terry's bail. Terry was able to leave incarceration on November 10th, 2017 due to the support of his backers, but he would not have a home to return to, but rather a van that his parents had given him. Despite how things were turning out, this wouldn't stop Terry from putting out videos and live streams when he was able to. The contents of his media were taking an expectedly darker route. 
Terry would regularly view adult content on his streams due to him hosting them on his own website, as he would finally be free of any sort of punitive measures for his quirks. He also recorded a few videos of himself pulling on his meat for Physics Girl. These videos were found on his website in a folder that was marked specifically for her. His grasp on the world around him was nosediving harder than ever before, but he did have a few moments captured on video where he was lucid, realizing that things weren't exactly how they should be. He likened his world to a personal prison. However, he maintained his position on his relationship with Physics Girl, and that she would elope with him in his van. Basically, I have a talking space alien. I told the CIA, fucking suck my cock, do the, do the demands that I have listed, fix the VMware speaker sound, fix the, uh, fix the full screen stretching in VMware. They're saying, aren't you gonna get a job? I'm a fucking high priest, I have a fucking space alien, you fucking monkey. In January of 2018, Terry stopped streaming altogether. Many Kiwi Farms users took note of this and were following his open assault case. When they checked to see if he got thrown in the clink, they discovered that he hadn't appeared for his January 18th court date, which meant there would be a failure to appear warrant put out for him. Certainly a bad situation to be in. Terry would start uploading media again in March of 2018. During his break from social media, he had moved to the hellhole that is Portland, Oregon, which is over 700 miles from his previous location in Vegas. Many of his online followers speculated that he had been living with a sibling and had moved because he was kicked out. However, this was never clarified as to why he would move without his van or his laptop. Once Terry was located in Portland, some individuals that were familiar with Terry and his story tracked him down so they could post their interactions with him. Some of these visits were recorded, featuring impromptu interviews and stuff of that nature. The content was subsequently posted in circles that were focused on him, as well as programming boards. One of the most important things to take away from these videos is Terry's lucidity when he was speaking about programming and general computing. Meanwhile, his beliefs on theology and glowy psyops would be clouded by mental illness. He'd be genuinely happy discussing why he decided to stick with non-networked baseline assembly while the new generation could do amazing things with the dawn of the internet. It's pretty crazy when you see just how much this man loves technology. By May, his situation had significantly worsened. In one video, he shared his belief that he was in a psychic conference call with CEO and tech mogul Elon Musk and the former U.S. Secretary of Defense General James N. Mattis. These psychically powered consultations were where these guys would design new features and functions for Temple OS. Somewhere along the line, Terry said that he believed that Physics Girl cheated on him with Elon Musk. Musk has never confirmed nor denied these claims. In August of 2018, Terry had lost any ability to focus on single tasks, let alone his ability to speak. His speech was often slurred and unintelligible. His general appearance and health had also severely declined. August 11th, 2018. Terry is struck by an oncoming train, killing him instantly. Prior to his passing, he uploaded a video where he is clearly teetering on the edge of lucidity. He mentions that he is horribly sick, as if he's a shock to society when he's seen. Well, I'm King Terry, and, uh... Learned how to purify, my, purify myself in a horribly impure environment. Uh, it's pretty rough living uh, homeless in, uh, in a field outside a little town and uh, coming into their library. And uh, it's a very pure town and uh, must have been an extreme shock to them to see such a horribly sick person come in here and pollute everything and uh, it was a lot of torture to snap me into uh, an ability to, uh, to handle purity for this job. So, uh, well, it's good to be king. <laughs> Wait, maybe. I think uh, maybe I'm just like a little bizarre little person who walks back and forth. Whatever, you know. <laughs> Please. This news was incredibly unexpected to most people, wherein many users on 4chan and other discussion sites began examining Terry's online presence to find any clues of this being a hoax. These conspiracies were soon debunked by news reports and from the Oregon police correspondence with Terry's family. According to the train conductor, Terry's death appeared to be intentional. Following word of Terry's unfortunate demise, his fans from around the world would post tributes in his memory to many social media services, including r slash official, which is still active to this very day. Despite his long battle with his mental health and the horrific burdens that plagued his life, people still remember the legacy he left. He enriched people's lives with his hard work, inspiring many to take on software development for themselves. Nothing he did was forgotten as his work is still archived on templeos.org. The news of his passing would also inspire many of his fans to raise money for mental health initiatives in his name. 
There are plenty of people that say that Terry's ailments were worsened by his interactions with the internet, and while that may be true to a certain extent, his following also provided him with support and kindness that he likely never would have been exposed to. Terry's legacy would have been in a vacuum. He routinely received love and overwhelming support from his fans. The internet saw Terry as the brilliant man he truly was, despite his colorful word choice due to his mental illness. He navigated his mania and the gradual breakdown of his mind in an effort to do something more, to create something larger than himself. He explored the limits of computing and his own person, embracing his faith through his passion for computer engineering. Beyond everything else, Terry was a brilliant man whose work has impacted the lives of many and will continue to do so. Rest in peace, King Terry Andrew Davis. And unfortunately, that's the end of today's video. If you like what I do, leave a comment, rate, and subscribe. If you want to support me in a more personal way, you can check out the Patreon link and the Teespring link in the description. I've got more content coming down the pipeline. But until then, I'll see you degenerates next time.